Hello and welcome to What a Director Needs. My name is Greg Winkler. I've been acting and singing in Colorado for the last 20 or so years. Today we're going to talk about finding those moments in a show that make that show very, very special. With me today is actor and director Nigel Aves. Hello. Actor and director Nancy Van Fleet. And actor and director mm -hmm. Larissa Nederland. The first thing when you're given a sh uh, script is let's talk about broad categories because obviously if you're doing a musical versus a drama versus a you know rom-com, you're going to approach it differently in finding those things. Let's talk about how to find those little moments, depending on the categories. Actually, they have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Every script that I approach, I look for what, it, what are the key moments that move that plot along, that tell the story. Mm -hmm. So those are the key moments that I'm going to focus on mm -hmm. as a director. I, do. I think it's very hard when you're actually reading a script to realize what sort of nuances you want to build in. Mm -hmm. okay. Because it all depends on how you cast it. Mm -hmm. It all depends on the characters that you cast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then to add a further level of complication, it all depends on how, they under how the actors understand their character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But once you've done one or two rehearsals, you start to get those little inklings, those little feelings about mm -hmm. where things can cut in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you finding that also during auditions? trying to find those auditions? In auditions, because we work at the community theatre level, I'm trying to find a good, solid base of actors mm -hmm. that look like they will fit into the part. Right. Okay? So I personally don't worry about it until after the fact. Okay. But of course, you know, being in community theatre, and if you've done a lot of directing, you begin to understand a lot of the actors that come to the auditions. Mm -hmm. You understand their high points, you understand their low points, and you can make best use of it as a director. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's where I sit anyway. Yeah. Yeah. How's our independent? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say, like, coming back to the original question as far as genre goes, um, I, it's easy to fall into the trap of stereotype. For, so, you know, this is a comedy, so this is going to be this tempo and mm -hmm. go at it. But taking every script and reading it for what it is, not just the story and what's moving along with Nancy, but also uh, what is the tone of this? What it, do I hear this play? Do I see this play? Are there colors? Is there sound? Is there music? And then going into auditions, it's about finding people who fit into that world. So what does this feel like? What does it, um, how, is this going to be a soft play? Is it going to be gentle? Is it fragile? Is it delicate? Or is it, is it popping? Is it moving fast? Is it um, sharp edges? And then finding people who play in that, in that world. Um, and then that's, it's about energy. Uh, it's, you know, having that solid base of, act, of, of acting ability. And then if you can, being able to find those people that, that really fit into that world. Mm -hmm. And then it's also going to come down to source material. So obviously knowing Knowing your author right. is going to be a big mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. I'm going to approach Shakespeare different than mm -hmm. Gilbert and Sullivan, <laughs> Gilbert different than Mamet, yeah. things like that. True. So how does that? How do you, how do you work inside that framework as well? You know, I I hate to contradict you, but I really do approach every script in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, it, the words may be different, the, the approach may be a little bit mm -hmm. different, but when it comes down to it, we're all telling a story. <coughs> every script tells a mm -hmm. story. And mm -hmm. what I do is try and pare down those things that do not um, support that story mm -hmm. and, and focus in on the things that really move that story along. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I yeah. think uh, along with that, uh, when you're reading Mamet, um, when I was talking about like tone and stuff, the reason people do approach Mamet a certain way is because he writes all of his plays that way, that have that same feel. Right. They're all Mamet. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mamet. Right. <laughs> Mamet. Exactly. And he cares very strongly about how people approach his work, and but sure. he writes it to be that way. Mm -hmm. So right. so when you read it, Doing that on yeah, um, it, it can't help you understand a work if you're like, I don't know how to approach this. I can't feel mm -hmm. it. I don't know what it's mm -hmm. by looking at an author's other work mm -hmm. to be able to see. Oh, I see what he's getting at here. I, I understand this didn't feel right because I was thinking about it. Um, as a comedy, but it's not a comedy, it's a drama, or the other way around, or mm -hmm. um, I was taking, I was 
I was believing this character, but Mammoth's characters always lie, you know, so being able to to have that history can help if there's a problem, but but essentially the reason we, we approach different playwrights in certain ways is because they write consistently. Right. I, mm -hmm. I feel like they have their sure. own style. See, I, I look at it a slightly different way. I, I do not care who wrote it. That is not, okay. That's of no interest to me at all. Mm -hmm. It's what is written. Mm -hmm. That is my interest. And if I can read a play and say to myself, can I make this mine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then I'm interested in doing it. If I read a play like Shakespeare, because we all know how much I hate Shakespeare, <laughs> <laughs> just one of those things. Sure. I really don't like Shakespeare, honestly. <laughs> anyway, if if I could, if I read a play and I just don't feel it, I, I don't feel where the story's going or why it's going, I don't get it. Then mm -hmm. it's not a play I'm interested in at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it also depends on. Who, how, what the actor's interpretation mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. um, each actor is going to bring his or her own personal experience into the role, and that's going to alter how that story gets told. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, it will shift those key points a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be flexible with a director so that you can shift to that, mm -hmm. uh -huh. depending on how the actors grow into the role. Mm -hmm. Actors, I prefer actors who don't show up at auditions with exactly what they're going to do the last night of performance. Mm -hmm. I want them to grow and discover things about the characters mm -hmm. and the relationships that they have and, and you know, how, how they're going to tell the story. Um, and so that's going to shift throughout the course of rehearsals. And I think that that brings up a point as far as what all of us are talking about is is not getting into the trap of there's a right way to do this. Mm -hmm. There's a right way to do Shakespeare. There's a right way to play this role. There's a right way to be Hamlet. It's it's all about uh, a fresh take. And that's what makes theater so exciting is it's new every time and everyone's bringing their own piece. Every audience member brings their perspective and their understanding to it. So, so it's fresh and new every single time, which is what's so exciting about what we do. And, and that's... That's why you, you can't get stuck in, this is how we do this. Or even as a director, like, this is how I'm going to direct this. It, it, there has to be that flexibility mm -hmm. because it needs to live and grow and be, mm -hmm. be a living thing. Well, you, you, yes, you, you can read Shakespeare and do that. You can do it the Shakespearean mm -hmm. way. My daughter, Alex, um, she directed um, Romeo and Juliet mm -hmm. out in uh, L.A. And what she did was she made both families circus families. Mm -hmm. And then built circus acts mm -hmm. into, the, mm -hmm. and she did not change one word of dialogue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I actually went out, and it's the first time I enjoyed Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah. Because right. yeah, it was so absolutely. different. It mm -hmm. was so different. Mm -hmm. and, and I think one of the things where people go wrong with Shakespeare is they over prop it, they overset it. Mm -hmm. Everyone today seems to forget that this was done on a box set mm -hmm. that had nothing. Yes. That's how Shakespeare is <laughs> meant to be done, mm -hmm. but no one does it like that anymore. Mm -hmm. And I, I personally don't understand why. Forgetting mm -hmm. about context. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Forget about, forgetting yes. about the context of how it was supposed to be done. How it was supposed to be done. That's yeah. how Shakespeare did it. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. That's how he wrote it. It was for that sort of stage. Also, mm -hmm. there were no women in it. <laughs> when was the last time you ever saw an all-male version of a Shakespearean play? You have to have that many male actors, but... <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's community theater, after all. Um, so, do you, when you're doing your homework before and you're going through the script, do you find yourself... Obviously, you're trying to find those moments that move the story along. Mm -hmm. Are you casting based on trying to make those moments happen? Okay. <laughs> um, there, there are key moments in every script that are turning points for the plot. Uh -huh. And it will take you to the end of the, of the show. It drives you towards the end of the show. So you want, you know, if, you, if we think of the play as a train, you want to make sure that you've got the cars that are necessary in order to <laughs> get you to the end. Right. So you're going to have to have somebody, whoever, whatever character is driving the plot forward, is generally the engine. You've got somebody in the back pushing it as well. So that's your caboose. And then you've got to add maybe, you know, maybe two characters are having an affair and they 
throw a you know, monkey wrench in the things. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to have your sleeping cars then. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> things like that. So um, basically, um, yes, I, I am looking for those types. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be exactly what I had mm -hmm. in my mind. Sure. Um, I, there was one show that I did where a gentleman came in to read for the romantic lead. And he was the comedian. Right. And he didn't even know it. And mm -hmm. so he ended up getting cast in, uh, in a totally different role mm -hmm. than he expected, and he was perfect in it. Right. But so y you end up adjusting mm -hmm. as, you go, as you go in. But yeah, you have things in mind. You kind of have a framework in mind when you go mm -hmm. in. I think with, uh, for those moments, casting those moments, you do need to think about uh, chemistry between, mm -hmm. right. between actors, and that's mm -hmm. a big part of it. Not necessarily romantic chemistry, but depending on the roles potentially sure. um, but thinking about where where is there going to be conflict and where does that need where is that helpful mm -hmm. and where is that not helpful and sometimes in community theater you actually know people's real personalities and where there's drama behind the scenes and where to avoid <laughs> that. Uh, or, and drama behind the scenes? Uh, what? I know. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes how you can use that potentially uh, to, sure. to make something uh, come more alive for people uh, mm -hmm. on the stage as well. I suppose I, I do look for chemistry on stage I don't quite know how to put this, but it all goes on in, in the head. It doesn't necessarily mean I spot it immediately, but something mm -hmm. just feels right mm -hmm. about that particular mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. sure. doing that particular type of audition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Blocking is obviously an important part, and, and the movement on the stage is an important mm -hmm. part of how you're, how you're telling the story, mm -hmm. the tones you're setting, those special moments. Um, and you and we've done a lot of work with mm -hmm. you know a lot of different movement techniques. How are you how are you kind of approaching using the blocking? And for me, that that feels very much about what what is the play telling me when I do that first initial read mm -hmm. and I'm feeling that world and it is very instinctual. Like you're saying, it's that it just feels yeah. right. There's yeah. something there. Um, so finding how I direct something is partly based on on how it feels. So. Um, like Women of Lockerbie that I directed a few years ago, you know, it was this very intimate, very beautiful, mm -hmm. but also had kind of a formality to it. Uh, um, it was kind of this Greek kind of drama. And yeah. being able uh, to find a movement that worked together, the actors had to bring it together to make it organic and to make it th this beautiful thing. So casting people who are willing to be very vulnerable uh, and who are willing to to put themselves out there to try new things, and then building that together through a series of of having a shared shared vocabulary, language uh, mm -hmm. movement vocabulary. Sure. So playing a lot, doing a lot of exercises to be able to understand, so everyone understand how everyone else moved to be able to move together and feel together. And really, mm -hmm. it was it was kind of like breathing, to, like a chorus. You know, they breathe together right. to feel the movement of, of a song. It, it felt very similar with um, how we did that in, in Lockerbie to be able to to move together and breathe together, to breathe the play in and out. Um, so every moment was very, very special and um, because it all lived in that world. And some plays, there are important plot pieces that move things forward that those need to be enhanced, but others are very tonal, and so you do need this all-encompassing. So other plays I would approach very differently, but that sure. one had this this all-encompassing tone that, that the actors were able to, to mm -hmm. weave together well and that purpose that show had a purposeful great chorus feel yes exactly yeah that was, yep. that was mm -hmm. very intentional mm -hmm. and you played in the playwright yeah that. exactly those mm -hmm. those those pieces those those chorus members moved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a unit exactly mm -hmm. to tell the story you <clears throat> see I had a, a, a similar situation but a totally different type of play with Narnia mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the thing about Narnia are all of the Narnians so we have beavers on stage, right, right, we have, yeah. we have um, chipmunks on stage, we have squirrels on stage, we have wolves on mm -hmm. stage who act as the police, um, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. Obviously my cast, I think the cast was about 50 people, so a lot of the cast were very young actors. Mm -hmm. You know, from 18 or 17 I think was my youngest, up to about say 25. And the hardest thing I had was getting them to become Narnians. Mm. 
And I was trying to explain to them over and over again, and they just weren't getting it. If you are not acting like the animal that you are, the audience is going to see a human being dressed as a Narnian. Mm -hmm. So eventually, now some of my older uh, chorus people, people like uh, Debbie Zarek was excellent, Sarah Freeman was excellent, she, she was the beaver. <laughs> they started to really get into their roles early on in the rehearsal. Sure. Very early on in the rehearsal, something I wouldn't normally have worried about. But they really started to get into character. And then everyone slowly began to understand where I was coming from. Mm -hmm. That they all had to be animals. The audience has to sit there and see animals, mm -hmm. not human beings dressed as animals. So very similar to, to, to your experience mm -hmm. in Lockerbie, um, but of course a totally different show. <laughs> yeah. Totally different show. But that, that brings up an excellent point about the dynamics of the cast. Oh, yes. Is that was giving them, everybody else, permission, mm -hmm. essentially, yes. to be able to go, go that. I had a young guy, he was Jordan, he, he played the skunk. And all of a sudden, he really, he got into it. <laughs> he, he really got into it. And, I don't, and all I of don't the, want to know what he got into. No, don't get, you don't want to know. <laughs> Boy, was it smelly. <laughs> <laughs> he really got into it, and then the rest of the younger cast members understood. So I had the older generation mm. helping the young, mm. and then Jordan was the first one to really understand it, and then everyone slowly began to understand mm. it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, a cast has to help itself. There's only so much we mm. can do as directors. And I think, Greg, you, you hit on the key word, permission. Mm -hmm. You have to give your actors permission to play, to inhabit that character, and to commit to it. Uh -huh. Part of that is how do you, what are you doing as a director to create that environment? Well, not getting in your actor's way is the first thing. Um, I think a lot of directors get so controlling about a cast that they do get in the way of mm -hmm. that development happening. Um, in taking it back to a more realistic approach, for instance, with Man Who Came to Dinner, um, I directed that a few years ago, and we did a lot of research on the period we looked at what the relationships were between the characters. Um, I always do a lot of table work, um, talking to the actors about what's your background, what you know, where were you born, what you know, what yeah, what right? were your, what was your key experience in your life so far, mm -hmm. and um, what's your relationship to you know this guy over here who's playing playing your father? What's the, what's your relationship to your father? How do you feel about your younger sister? Mm -hmm. You know, is she just annoying to you, or you know, do you support each other? What kind of relationships mm -hmm. do you have? And from there, the actors will make those discoveries. And I think it's interesting, sometimes uh, you're trying to get something specific from an actor or a couple of actors in a scene. They might interpret what you're saying differently, so they, they might say, oh, I realize I need to be really angry, and you're reading sorrow. You're like, sure, great, be angry. <laughs> but really, what you want is sorrow, but that's what you're getting, so that's, let them, mm -hmm. I shouldn't reveal my secrets, but you know, like let them right. believe whatever they want to <laughs> believe as long as you're getting what you need to get and what the, the audience is going to feel and what their partner is going to feel. Let me ask you a question. Okay. As a director to an actor, mm -hmm. how much freedom do you like as an actor? Oh, I absolutely, I mean, I, I want to be able to free reign. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> but I'm I'm also willing to take it outside my comfort envelope, mm -hmm. and potentially the you know even the comfort envelopes of the people around me, which sometimes happens, and you've got to be careful about that. Obviously, but I, I want to be able to. And again, we we've talked about you know at an audition, is that person going to give me exactly the same performance? on closing night as right now, uh-uh. And I think that's also part of, from my experiences, I want the people around me doing exactly the same thing mm -hmm. because I want them keeping me on my toes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want them keeping me in the moment and obviously Dave's great at doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, so setting up an environment obviously 
where um, you know, maybe I play it sorrowful one day and then I play it mm -hmm. angry the next mm -hmm. day and we're doing that experimenting mm -hmm. as, we're gen you know, as we're creating the character. When I did Curious Savage, there's, um, I had Sarah Hoover and she was, I can't remember the name of the guy that played the doctor, but there was one little bit where, where Sarah, Sarah's character was very loop. Remember, this all takes place in a sort of like semi-asylum. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah's character is the most loopiest of loopies, okay? And there was one bit where she and the doctor are, are, are stood like that, face to face. Mm -hmm. And it's got some very fast dialogue going on. And I think it was written to be funny. The trouble is it wasn't funny. Yeah. Or at least I wasn't mm -hmm. getting it. Mm -hmm. And I suddenly said, you know, Sarah, I want you to try something for me. Say your line and then jump round backwards so your back is towards the doctor. Let the doctor say his line, then jump back and go face to face. So she had to do this about five times. Mm -hmm. she, never, she never really understood this all the way sure. through rehearsals, but, but she did it. So right at the end of the uh, rehearsals, she's, we're sitting down, we're having a beer at Mike O'Shea's. And she says, Nigel, I really don't feel comfortable doing that. She said, um, it, it just doesn't feel right. I said, Sarah, I said, tell you what, try it. Opening night, do it my way. Saturday night, do it your way. And we'll see what you do on the Sunday afternoon performance. She was doing it again on the Sunday afternoon <laughs> performance because my way got a lot of laughs. Okay. Her way, it was just very fast dialogue and it was over. Mm -hmm. It was nothing. Right. So there, there was an inch, and, and Sarah is a very, very, very talented mm. actress, That's very right. talented, but she didn't quite understand where I was coming from because it was a visual thing. Mm -hmm. she, right. she just was not seeing it from the visual aspect. So how are you, what are the things you're doing as a director? Okay, you've got these, you've got these moments, maybe they're intimate, maybe they're sorrowful, maybe they're, you know, and you're trying to push that actor outside of their mm -hmm. comfort zone. So you've got the moment. Now you need to get that moment on the stage. What are the things you're doing as a director to, you know, to help your actors get there? There are a lot of things that you can do as a director. Um, one is make it intimate. Um, if you've got a scene between two, two actors who aren't really connecting, mm -hmm put them knee to knee in chairs and have them look into each other's eyes, mm -hmm. they will get there. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is that if there's some kind of a resistance point because everybody's got them, mm -hmm. have them breathe into the, that moment mm -hmm. and then go for the moment. Mm -hmm. um, taking long, slow, deep breaths and then allowing that emotion to be there will get them there. Mm -hmm. It depends on the resistance. <laughs> so, <Right>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, I think it depends on the moment uh, and, what, and the actor, so what needs to happen for that specific moment. Um, sometimes if, if I'm not getting enough from an actor, I do side coaching mm -hmm. where um, I'll talk alongside. I'm like, don't stop unless I say stop. And then I will just keep talking and like provide their subtext for them. Okay. So I'll speak it for them and um, and that usually, usually they'll just get so mad at me that they'll, they'll they're so frustrated <laughs> that they'll, they'll go further than they thought they could go right. just because they want me to shut up. Um, and that, that can bring something to a moment. But other, other times, if it does need to be small and intimate, we'll try different things. Um, like, okay, try the scene and find a different way to touch, to, to connect physically with every line, a different mm -hmm. way to connect. And, and we're not gonna play it that way. That's right. not how the end product is going to be, but it's going to be a step along the way towards the end. Then we can take some of those away, or we might add more, you know, depending mm -hmm. on the show and the moment. Uh, but there's so many different ways, but it depends on the actor, it depends on the moment and what you're trying to get from it. Okay. And there are times when you will use all of these. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Trying to get there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've been lucky, actually, because except for the Narnia experience, I've never had that issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Getting they, they, they've they've they always to raised the game mm -hmm. to where I want it. But on the other hand, I've never directed, should we call it, high drama. Sure. Mm -hmm. I've wanted to, but the damn production committee would always throw <laughs> it out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's another story. Yeah. Um, but I've never done high drama, which I'd, I'd love to do at mm -hmm. least one. Mm -hmm. Sure. Something that was really, you know, down to earth, gritty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And I've always wanted to act evil. <laughs> We talked about this in a previous show. <laughs> I, I want, so, if you come across a show where you need pure evil, I would love to be considered for it. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it's always so much better yeah. with an English accent. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I, and oh boy, I can say absolutely oh, anything on stage. <laughs> I think coming back to your question, yeah. sometimes um, when there's a moment that's not working, sometimes I need to rethink it as a director. Mm -hmm. Like Absolutely. maybe I'm trying to, to take it in a, mm -hmm. in a direction it's not supposed to go or is going against the actor's strengths. Mm -hmm. So sometimes just saying, okay, try it five different ways and let me look at it. It gives them a chance to play and like do it different every time and let's, mm -hmm. let's see which direction it's headed. And sometimes that will just give us a starting off point mm -hmm. of oh, I never, I never saw it that way before. Okay. Uh, I didn't think about it that way. And a lot of times, actors will know if something's not working, but they might not be mm -hmm. willing to say that uh, sure. until you give them the, free, the freedom to do that. So let's talk about, um, there's one thing that's with this as I'm, I'm, I'm talking about stretching an actor. Mm -hmm. There's also a safety issue mm -hmm. that I think we need to also talk about too is pushing people too far. The, you have to know where your actor is coming from, in which case you have to know your actor pretty intimately mm -hmm. in order to know where that safety is. Mm -hmm. When you run into that resistance that I talked about mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. it's usually a, some kind of a psychological sure. block. Mm -hmm. For me, sometimes, so it's trusting my instincts and being able to sure. read my actors, and, but sometimes I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I had an example, I was directing Spoon River Anthology and I had uh, an actor who was um, portraying one of the monologues uh, where there's a suicide and she sure. was having a really hard time and I, I just thought she wasn't emotionally ready to prepare that or mm -hmm. to she wasn't ready enough, so I was trying to push her and then one of the other actors so they were taking care of each other they knew each other they're taking care of each other one of the other mm -hmm. actors came to me and told me that her grandfather had committed suicide and so she she just mm -hmm. so I I, ha I went to her and I'm like do you want to do this like you do not have to do this I can give this to someone else that's sure. totally fine but she was ready totally. to do it she yeah. wanted to do it she it was a, a mm -hmm. therapeutic thing for her to do but she was but I'm glad I asked her, and I'm glad that someone else yes. was looking out for her, that there was that mm -hmm. level of trust among the whole right. unit, that they were willing to come to me and say what was actually going on. Mm -hmm. When we did One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, didn't you feel that the whole cast just rose together? Yes, absolutely. There was a hell of a lot of discomfort at the beginning. Uh, uh, and the, Well, yes. And an and, and inability... To f to make it fluid and make it feel like this was this this, this was, was real actually a home yes. <laughs> for these people yes um, but it took a long time to get there because one thing you know I, I played Mr Ruckley so you may think that's a nice easy role being <laughs> probably some of the hardest acting I've ever done because I could never break character mm -hmm. yeah because I had to be that for the wedding scene <laughs> out on the front of the stage I had to be the basketball hoop. Mm -hmm. Um, which was interesting, very, very interesting. And that, um, that's, a, I mean, it, it's, it's a, that's a weird dynamic. That's a very out, out of character, you know, you can do a thing in a, in a kitchen. Mm -hmm. And that's a normal environment. This is a totally different, you know, yes. not normal environment for most of us. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think it took a long time to develop yeah. those dynamics mm -hmm. and feel comfortable in that space. Yeah. I mean, as an actor, different. I had never played a part like that before. Mm -hmm. But I felt totally comfortable doing it because I knew from the front it was looking correct. Mm -hmm. right. And I think as an actor, if you think of it, if you look at acting in that direction, mm -hmm. you'd be surprised how far you can go. Mm -hmm. You'd really be surprised. Got two funny stories actually from uh, Cook. Well, actually one funny one, one not so funny. Right at the start of the show when we're all brought in, there's a, there's a McMurphy comes on and then just before he comes in front of me, I meant to pee myself on stage, so I bought a douching kit, had the bottle in my back, had the pipe going up over my shoulder down into my crutch, so that when I pushed the small of my back, and that's, that was the hard thing, was when you threw me up against the wall, making <laughs> sure hitting. we didn't turn the damn thing on. So push back in, and then of course it would automatically sure. feed. The first night I put far too much water in it, and I had the River of Jordan flowing across <laughs> the stage in front of me. And every time someone crossed, you heard splash, splash, splash. splash. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether you heard this from Debbie or not, but on opening night, there was an audience member. 
And the curtains open and after five minutes, Debbie noticed this person suddenly jump up and rush out into the lobby. Mm. Debbie being who she is, she's a trained nurse, she jumped up and followed them out and this person was in the lobby basically almost crying. Mm -hmm. She said, my husband had me committed mm. back in the mid 60s. Mm. She said, I thought I could come to this show yeah. and watch it. She said, you made me flashback. Mm. One of the things that Debbie did was nuance after nuance in that show. Okay. She actually uh, had a couple of people audition that did not want to really have lines or anything. They just wanted to be in the show. And they were two nurses mm -hmm. from the United Hospital. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Ruckley used to get spoon-fed by the nurses. Mm -hmm. And I could dribble it down my chin. Mm -hmm. And they could mop it up. And, and she put all these little nuances in the show with all the characters. Mm -hmm. So that, that brings up an interesting point of... We, we tend to think of those special moments in a play as, you know, there are two or three of these mm. really big ones. But it can also be mm. all sorts of little things mm -hmm. along yeah. the way, all those little nuances. I think sometimes the big things, you've got to be careful with the big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you put in lots of small things, just making it more human mm -hmm. has a far bigger impact mm -hmm. overall. Mm -hmm. So People gets, really get sucked, sucked you, into you've it. Got, you've got skunks on stage and you've got beavers right. on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any instances where um, while you're doing the play and you're doing this work and you're doing and you're and you think, okay, that's the pivotal moment for this character, and it turns out no. It was where it changed in the course of audition in the course of the show. That's okay. It, you know, yeah. Mm. It, 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 it's Theater is, an, is a collaboration. Mm -hmm. It's um, the director brings their vision to it. Um, the actors bring their skills and their vision to it. The author, uh, obviously, mm -hmm. the playwright has, you know, a lot of that. So there's input from all kinds of places. No production is going to be exactly like the next production because mm -hmm. it's different players. Mm -hmm. So um, that's fine. Mm -hmm. If that key moment changes a little bit because the actor, you know, makes some different choices, that's great. Mm -hmm. And that's where a director has to be flexible. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of go with it. So you just have to kind of watch it evolve. Right. And I, I want to talk also about um, about playing playing those moments. I mean, you, and you're going to have a different moment. And for some reason, I, on the way in, I was thinking about. Um, I was thinking about Chet from Over the Tavern. So a, a big person, a, a big person with anger issues who tends to loom on stage. And that's kind of, you know, how he plays his big moments as he, as he, yeah. and then for some reason I had Dogberry as another option. <laughs> okay. Those two characters could potentially loom. But they're going to loom or in very different ways on stage. So how do you how do you kind of approach and play those moments when you know they're, they're very different characters? Well, as an actor, if you're inhabiting that character, your background is going to get. Chet's background is going to be totally different than Dogberry's background. <laughs> so the looming is going to happen differently. Yeah. <laughs> yes, um, it just, it is what it is. I, I don't see any conflict between the two. It's just the, the character is going to determine how that, char the, that action happens. You can loom as, I can loom as Nancy, but... <laughs> Um, you could loom in a very different way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, Dogberry and, and Chet are just going to be totally different. Right. Thank you for joining us for What a Director Needs. I'm Greg Winkler. See you next time. Mm -hmm.